Today I'm going to show you how I took this photo, removed all the footprints, cleaned it up, colour corrected it, so I end up looking like this. All on a Findy Photo 2 on the iPad. Last month here in Northern Ireland we had a bit of snow, so myself and the family went and had a bit of a play about in it. We don't often get snow, and if we do, it doesn't normally last too long. So we took this opportunity, I actually took them out of school for the day, just to have a play around. At the end of the day, I brought my drone out, got a few shots, and I really, really liked this one. But it was a bit too messy, and I thought, I can clean this up in Affinity Photo too. So I'm going to show you step by step how I did it. So let's get into it. Here we are, back inside Affinity Photo 2 on my iPad. And this is a photo that was taken from my drone. If you're curious, I own the Mavic 2 Pro. And on our snowy day that we had a few weeks ago, we played about with the kids. We'd done lots of good fun. And then just at the very end, just for maybe five or 10 minutes, I brought the drone out and took a few photos and videos. As you can probably already tell, it's a little underexposed exposed and sometimes when you're shooting in the snow the camera it kind of compensates for the snow for for it being so so white and it makes the images a little bit darker and it makes the snow a little bit darker so before i try to tidy up this photo a bit i'll maybe just quickly adjust some of the colors in this photo and to do that i'm going to go over to the adjustment studio here on the right hand side and I'm going to go down to exposure and you can see straight away, great thing about Findy Photo 2, under adjustments and filters, you can see a little bit of a preview of things that might happen if you touch this and you can see exposure straight away. In the bottom right hand corner, we've got a few icons here and simply if you tap on the exposure and with your finger, you can move either left or right. Obviously, if you move left, it's going to take the exposure down and if you move right, it's going to put the exposure up and, and blow it way out. But I'm just going to judge this by eye, something that I think kind of looks not too bad. And something like that isn't bad. And that's sitting at 0.87. And if I just tap on it, you can also type in 0.8 or maybe 0.9. We'll, we'll just up it a little. The icon beside it or the dial beside it really is opacity. So you can bring it up and down and that will change the opacity of the adjustment layer. So if we just go into our layers, you'll see we've got our background. We can turn that on and off. If we turn it off, obviously there's nothing there. And above it, we've got our adjustment layer. And what's nice about Findy Photo, it tells you exposure adjustment, and you can turn that on and off. So that's what it was. And that's what it is now. And you'll see the dials have disappeared or the, this wee toolbox really has disappeared down here. If we want to get it back, just double tap onto this icon and we'll get it back. Normally I don't just, I don't change the opacity down here. If I wanted to change the opacity of this exposure, normally I would click on the layer, click on these three dots and change it this way. And that's just something I do. I think it, it gives more control rather than changing the opacity here. Essentially they both do the same things, but it's just personal preference really. And I, I prefer trying to get it set in here and then changing it on the layer rather than going into exposure. And I'll maybe move it. I know I had it at 0 0.9, but I'll maybe move it a little bit. And there's it at 1.13 now. And that's looking much better, I think. It's, it's much better, certainly, than it was. If it was me, I'd, I'd try to get the colors to something I'm quite happy with. And then at the very end, I do a bit of color grading on it. And we'll maybe do that. We'll, we'll see how we get on, but I might do that at the very end. If I'm trying to get colors just dialed in a little bit more, I'd go into my adjustment layers again. I'd probably go to curves and I'd click on this graph and I'd maybe just click in the middle and this produces a dot. What's happening here is we're really just adjusting the mid-tones of photos. And I think in the future, I'll take the curves adjustment layer and go into it in a bit more detail. But really, we're going to bring up the mid-tones of the photo by just bringing this graph up a little or this line graphed up or down. And that'll darken the mid-tones. But I just want to bring it, bring it up ever so slightly. And sometimes you'll see me going up and then down, up and then down. Not as much as that, but just because I like to see what it is and what it was. And I think You'll see the curves just going slightly up in the middle. And if I go back to our layer studio, and you, there's lots of other things we can do here, but just for today's purposes, we'll just turn this on and off. And that's not bad. It's brought it up just a little bit more. And although you can see more detail in the white there, I think that's quite nice. I think it just 
Certainly, I don't know how it looks on YouTube after it's compressed and rendered out, but I quite like that. I think it just looks a little bit brighter. Yeah, I like that. And, and the final thing I would do, I would go into our adjustments again and I would move down and I would click on Vibrance. And you can click on the saturation. If I click on the saturation, I normally don't do saturation. If I bring it to like 100%, you'll see, obviously it doesn't do much in the white, brings out a little bit more blue in the white, but you'll see these coats, these snow coats and jackets really go, whoa, neon nearly. And if we turn it all the way down, it makes the picture black and white. If we want to reset this, we'll just tap on this icon here and that resets it. Vibrance is what I'm looking for. And I'm just going to turn it up. Let's see. Yeah, maybe about 33% and it just lifts, certainly lifts my daughter's coat and trousers and my son's jacket here. If I turn it on and off, very, very subtle, but it just lifts it enough. And now we're ready to do a bit of editing on this photo. I'm going to click in the background and for good practice, I'll maybe just rename it by clicking in the three dots. And uh, let me just type this in as snow photo. Surely there's a better name than that, Andrew, but that'll do. Background would have been grand too. And I'm going to duplicate this photo. And there's a few ways we can duplicate this. We can click on these three dots and hit duplicate. And now what I'll maybe type in here is we'll go back to the bottom layer, click on the three dots, click into the snow photo. And we'll just type in snow photo original, click OK, and we'll go back. Now you can see we've got our snow photo, we've got the original, if we turn this on and off, obviously nothing's happening. And it's just nice to have this layer below, just in case we go too mad with our snow photo changes. And then it's also nice just to see before and after. You can use the history slider to see before and after, but it's nice just to have a before and after photo. And what I think is good practice, or what I'm starting to do more and more is good practice, is start to lock this layer. Just in case, by mistake, we click on this layer and we start to edit it and to lock it. We'll go back into the three dots, click the lock icon. And if we we'll go back now, if we want to say move this, there's we can't. Oh, we can move the layer above it. We'll do two fingers to undo that. But if I wanted to erase some of this image, nothing's happening because you see the wee lock icon there. So we're going to click into our snow photo. We're going to hide the layer studio and we're going to go down to the left hand side. We'll click on the clone brush. We don't want the clone brush. We'll go to the in painting brush. And this is, you see a photo like this, this is an awful lot of fun. And really, if we wanted to, you could say, Andrew, we've done the color correcting. That looks great. And I think it does look great. But just to maybe enhance this photo just a little bit more, I would certainly try to remove these snow, snow markings here. Try to remove these snow marks, markings, which I think someone's walked along here and then near snow has fallen on top of. And really, just to, to make it look really class, I think I might move this here. So my son's walked up here and down here. And it's nice that this is just cut off here because if I move that and I'll keep my daughter's markings here because if, if we were to move this bit and this bit, it looks as if it's, it's an unrealistic photo because they had to walk to, to get to the snow angel bit and for my son to look at my daughter. But by, by removing all these things, I think this will this will this will look really really well. Or time will tell. So we'll come down to the left hand side. This here is the width for something like this photo. The M paint brush should do a great job at moving this, and I don't want it massive. I want it probably something like that, and around just short of four hundred pixels. This here icon, if we if we tap on it, if there's a dot, you can always tap on these things. Flow set to hundred. I'm okay with that. Hardness, I want hardness. I don't want hardness to be completely hard. I don't want it to be completely feathered. Somewhere in the middle, 50% will do. And that'll mean the edge won't be super hard. It won't be super feathered. And uh, it'll sell the effect okay. And then opacity, we want 100%. And that's also okay at 100%. So we'll just simply, we'll maybe start with this big line first. And I'm tempted to zoom in, but I think, and I'll maybe even make it a little bit bigger because I don't think we need to zoom in. And I think it's going to be a little bit bigger. And you can see actually the hardness. You can see the edge of this is slightly feathered. And we'll go up here. We'll try to get quite close to here. It's doing its magic. It's taking a second. Boom, look at that. Absolutely fantastic. It's not perfect because we've got this wee line, which I'm just going to remove. And there's a dot there. There's a dot there. 
that is looking really straight away. The image is vastly improved, but is it cheating, Andrew? Yes, is the answer, but it is, uh, look at that. Oh, this is going to be a lot of fun. And we'll just uh, maybe come down here. And I know I've, I've missed a bit here and I'll, I'll go into this in a bit more detail. I'm just going for quick, quick wins. And especially when you're doing photo editing, it's brilliant to get quick wins because you feel like you're doing something quicker or, or the results are showing quicker than doing the fine detail stuff. And we're moving these feet marks look at that this is where the in paint and brush really shines and it's having a bit of trouble moving that i'll maybe try to move some of these feet beside this before trying that and sometimes it doesn't get it perfect first time but normally after another few attempts it does the business look at that and because it's snow, then paint and brush is having an absolute field day because there's so much to reference from and you'll, you'll not notice with it being snow. And if I zoom in now, I'm going to bring the brush down a little. Just mark here. I don't want to touch the shadow of my sun. And there's another footprint here. And again, I don't want to touch the shadow. That that's looking real. That's looking really, really nice. There's a few bits here. Maybe should have made my brush size a little bit bigger for that. There's just a few bits that I'm just not happy with there. So I've got my son coming down, looking at my daughter, looking at his sister. I've got these two bits I want to remove, but that that's starting to look really, really, really nice. And there's my daughter just looking at my son. You stay away. You stay away. I'm doing my snow angel. Don't come any closer is the thought from my daughter there, I can assure you. So we'll bring this down a little bit more. We're just getting a little bit closer and we'll try to get down to there. Yeah, that's brilliant. And here, we'll see what we can do here. I'll try to get this bit and and see the kind of mark it leaves there. And that's not bad. I might be tempted just to eat in on that bit. Just a little. And eat in on this bit just a little. And yeah, when it zooms out, I don't think you're going to notice that too much. Although I'm being very picky here, but there is a bit of a, a broken line there. And I'm just looking, is there anywhere else we can replace that bit down here? And I think I, I am going to replace that just because it's it's annoying me enough. And that's if we tap on the left hand side and we'll go to the clone brush. And we'll bring the, you can see a wee preview here. If we tap our finger down here, if we tap here and then click up here. It's not too bad. I'll maybe take it down a bit and I'll tap into this because I'll bring the hardness up to in around 50%. I'll bring this brush down a little and I'll try just holding and tapping my finger. I don't know if I like that anymore or not. What I might do is just try to get a bit of a bit of the white here, actually. Does that work? Yeah, that that works quite well because there's a footprint there. There's a footprint there. I know it's duplicated, but what do I prefer? Before or after? Again, it just comes down to personal preference. I think what I might do is tap one finger here. Just tried it. That's too big, actually. So I know I'm being very picky, but yeah, maybe that's maybe that's better. It was just really annoying me that line being broken up. And two fingers to undo, three fingers to redo. Yeah, that's looking that's looking much much better. And I'm really really happy with this. If I just hit the hand icon and. Clicking the zoom button up here and it'll zoom it in. 
I'm really, really happy with that. And there's a few things you could do. You could you could crop it in a bit more, but I like the fact that there's lots of space here. You could even crop it if you wanted to do social media. Let's see. You know, you could do for a social media post. I might cut out the shadow. Something like that looks really nice. Two fingers. Or just to print out or put text here about winter, winter snow 2023 or something like that. But I'm really happy with how that looks. And now if you're like me, you're saying, Andrew, I want to see the before photo. I want to see what it looked like before we started working on it. So if we just go into the layer studio, we'll click on our snow photo. Even though the layer is locked and you can't do effects on it or move it. You can move the layer itself and if we just move it up to the top, look at that. So we'll just hide it. That's how we finished. That's what it was. And I'll just flick this back and forward. You can see the colors make a big, big difference, but and I'll maybe just move this out of the way so it's, it's not interfering with the layers here. That's what it was. We, we removed all this and uh, it was a nice photo before. It was, or it was maybe an okay photo before, but that's such a powerful really really nice photo and in my next tutorial i'm actually going to work in this photo again because i've got my son here looking at my daughter but i do have a photo where he's looking up at the drone and i think that might be quite nice and let me just bring that photo up now that's the photo there you can see him looking up the drones either zoomed in or maybe it's a bit lower even and we're just going to take him and we're going to put him back into this photo just so it kind of, I think I'll add quite a bit because uh, you can't see his face there. And I think that it'll be a, a quick tutorial. It'll be a nice tutorial. And hopefully I'll see you in that one. So there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something. And in the description below, you can download this photo. And also when you download it, there's also a bonus photo. And the reason for that photo is because in the next tutorial, I'm going to be adding to this photo. So this is really a two part kind of project, a two part tutorial. So you're going to get two photos and we're going to combine them in together. So if you enjoyed this video, look out for the next video. I think you'll enjoy it also. Please give this video a like if you find any value in it. Please subscribe as there's more videos coming out on Affinity Photo 2 in the iPad soon. And until then, I'm going to spend my time trying to figure out why there's a big hole in my roof and why there's snow coming down. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.